Welcome back to Movie Mondays Trivia, fans, to people. I'm your host, John Bailey, aka the Epic Voice Guy, and I'm excited to be back with you again for another round of movie trivia. This week, we're partnering up with Lil Hotties. Thanks to Lil Hotties, we'll be adding some sweet prizes to the prize pool. Just a reminder that Freckle TV is the only game where you can answer five trivia questions every Monday through Friday, win incredible prizes from our sponsors. All you have to do each day is play, earn tickets, enter the raffles, just that simple. Now, who's ready for some movie trivia? Let's wrap up our cinematic knowledge with question number one. Ow, ow, ow. Movie, what movie is I Feel the Need, the Speed from? Is it A, Star Wars, B, Top Gun, C, The Matrix, or D, Independence Day? I said that's so weird. The iconic line, I feel the need, the need for speed. Echoes from the high-flying blockbuster, B, Top Gun. <laughs> Maverick and Goose, played by Tom Cruise and Anthony Edwards, soar through the skies in this adrenaline-fueled classic. And there's lots of running and volleyball, and there's lots of baby oil. Now let's dive into question number two. Which actor plays Aquaman? Is it A, Chris Hemsworth, B, Henry Cavill, C, Jason Momoa, or D, Zachary Levi? The guy who invented pants. The aquatic superhero known as Aquaman is brought to life by the charismatic sea, Jason Momoa. His portrayal adds a distinct and powerful presence to the DC Extended Universe, making Aquaman an actual force to be reckoned with outside of just water areas. Question number three is our sponsor question of the day. Shout out to our epic sponsors. Thank you to our epic sponsors. And now we move on to question number three. What is the name of the alien invaders in the 2014 film Edge of Tomorrow? Is it A, invaders, B, mimics, C, extraterrestrials, or D, xenomorphs? There's a lot of Tom Cruise going on today. I love it. In the intense sci-fi thriller B, Edge of Tomorrow, Earth faces a relentless threat from the alien species known as the Mimics. Tom Cruise's character, Cage, navigates a time-looping battle against these formidable extraterrestrial clones. Now let's move on to question number four. In which Batman film did Jim Carrey star as the Riddler? Was it A, Batman and Robin, C, B, Batman Begins, C, The Dark Knight, or B, D, Batman Forever? I don't know my alphabet. But that was a long time. Jim Carrey embraced the enigmatic role of the Riddler in D, Batman Forever, adding his signature comedic flair to the iconic villain. Paired with Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face, who actually hated him in that movie, Carrey's performance contributed to the film's dynamic and colorful portrayal of Gotham's rogues gallery. And also, Jim Carrey made a lot of money. Concluding our cinematic journey today is question number five. What is The Rock's name in Fast and Furious? Was it A, Dominic Toretto, B, Brian O'Connor, C, Roman Pierce, or D, Lou Cobbs. You smell what the crockpots couldn't cook in. Dwayne The Rock Johnson takes on the role of D, Lou Cobbs in the Fast and Furious franchise. As a diplomatic security service agent, Hobbs brings a formidable and action-packed presence to the high-octane world of fast cars and intense heists. And those two didn't like each other just as much as Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones. That concludes today's round of daily trivia. Thank you so much for playing today's game and a huge shout out to all our epic sponsors at Little Spot Hotties. Just make sure you sign up for a Freckle TV account and create your user profile in order to be eligible for raffles and prizes. Tune in tomorrow for a round of Freckle University with Hunter. Hey there, Freckle fam, what's happening? I'm Hunter the Boss Stitch and your host for Freckle University. Tuesdays, we're taking you back to school to test you on facts that you definitely learned and still remember. Wink, wink. <laughs> if you're new here, don't go, stick around. Freckle TV is the only free game where you can answer five daily questions, earn raffle tickets, and win prizes. You can even still get all the questions wrong and win. We like to think it's a no-brainer. This week, we're partnering up with Star Wolves. This week, all Forever and Gold Pass holders will have a special surprise waiting for them within the Star Wolves game. Check our Discord for more information. Let's get started with question one. 
Which continent is the most populated on Earth? A, Africa, B, Europe, C, South America, or D, Asia? With its colossal population exceeding 4 billion, our answer is D, Asia. This vast and diverse continent encompasses an array of cultures, languages, and landscapes, from the bustling metropolises of China and India to the serene island of Japan. Asia stands as a captivating tapestry of humanity. The intricate interplay of traditions and modernity creates a dynamic mosaic that shapes the global narrative in various spheres from economics to cultural exchange. Now let's delve into question two. How is sodium represented on the periodic table of elements? A, S, O, B, S, C, K, or D, N, A? Its atomic number 11 signifies its placement and it plays a crucial role in numerous chemical reactions. From its involvement in the coveted sodium potassium pump in biological systems to its vibrant flame-tested hues, sodium leaves an indelible mark on the realm of chemistry. Our answer is D, N, A. Sodium, a highly reactive alkali metal, claims its spot in group one and period three of the periodic table. Question three is our sponsored question of the day. Shout out to our boss sponsors. <laughs> Thank you to our boss sponsors. Now on to question three. Who was the second president of the United States? A, George Washington, B, Thomas Jefferson, C, James Madison, or D, John Adams? Serving as the nation's second president from 1797 to 1801, Adams followed the esteemed George Washington. His presidency laid a formidable foundation for the burgeoning United States, navigating the complexities of early governance and shaping the trajectory of the fledging nation. The answer is D, John Adams. Transitioning to question four. How many sides are equal in an isosceles triangle? A, zero, B, one, C, two, D, three. An isosceles triangle distinguished by two equal sides stands as a captivating geometric entity. This symmetrical configuration contributes a unique dynamic to the world of triangles, setting it apart from its geometric counterparts and offering intriguing possibilities for exploration in mathematical realms. The answer is C, two. Now let's explore the linguistic landscape with question five. What part of speech is the word quickly? A, noun, B, adjective, C, adverb, D, preposition. In the intricate tapestry of language, quickly assumes the role of an adverb. Meticulously detailing the manner in which an action unfolds, it seamlessly integrates into sentences, propelling narratives with a sense of speed and urgency. Understating the nuanced rules of various parts of speech enhance, enhances our command, our language, enabling us to communicate with precise and eloquence. The answer is C, adverb. And that concludes today's round of Freckle University. Thank you so much for playing today's game and a huge shout out to our boss sponsors at Star Wolves. Just make sure you sign up for an, a Freckle TV account and create your user profile in order to be eligible for raffles and prizes. And tune in tomorrow for Hump Days with Brooke. <laughs> hey there, Freckle fam. Grab your game face because it's trivia time on Freckle TV with the one and only Brooke Bergstaller. That's me. Get ready for a thrilling quiz that'll either stump you or have you feeling like a trivia champion.
Either way, you're loved all the same. But if you are a winner, you're loved just a little bit more. The stakes, sponsored prizes and awesome swag. No cash, just cool stuff waiting for winners. Whether you're a seasoned trivia pro or just here for a good time, let's find out who's snagging the virtual crown today. And seriously, if you haven't set up your Freckle account yet, what's the holdup? Missing out on Freckle TV trivia with me, Brooke Bernstaller? Not exactly a strategic move, so tune in, play along, and let the trivia fun begin. This week, we're partnering up with Star Wolves. Oh! This week, all Forever and Gold Pass holders will have a special surprise waiting for them within the Star Wolves game. Check out our Discord for more information. Thanks to Star Wolves, we'll be adding some sweet prizes to the prize pool. Let's get the day started with question number one. Where is the Bermuda Triangle located? A, Pacific Ocean. B, Indian Ocean. C, Arctic Ocean. Or D, Atlantic Ocean. This mysterious area, notorious for reported disappearances of ships and aircraft, is situated in the D, Atlantic Ocean. While various theories attempt to explain the phenomena, the Bermuda Triangle remains an enigmatic part of the ocean, captivating the imagination of many. I can think of a few people I'd like to send on a one-way flight to the Bermuda Triangle. Just some ex-boyfriends and politician, but that's for another day. Moving on to question two. Which planet is closest to the Earth? A, Mars, B, Venus, C, Mercury, or D, Jupiter? I know what you're thinking. Well, what about Uranus? Well, that's on Earth, silly. And so the correct answer is the C planet closest to the Earth. It's Mercury. Despite its proximity, Mercury experiences extreme temperature variations with scorching hot days and freezing nights. Its proximity to the sun makes it a fascinating celestial body for astronomers and space enthusiasts alike. Unlike Uranus. I'm sorry, that's lame. I promise not to make any more Uranus jokes today. Question three is our sponsored question of the day. Shout out to our amazing sponsors. Thank you to our sponsors. Now let's move on to question number three. Where is the Oval Office located in the White House? A, the East Wing, B, West Wing, C, North Wing, or D, South Wing? Situated in the B, West Wing of the White House, the Oval Office serves as the official workplace of the President of the United States. This iconic room has witnessed numerous historical moments and decisions that have shaped the course of the nation for better or for worse. I sometimes wonder what kind of country we would live in if it were, say, a, a hexagonal office. A girl can dream. Moving on to question number four. What does the US Postal Service do with letters to God? A, discards them. B, sends them to the Vatican. C, forwards them to local churches. Or D, stores them in a museum. The US Postal Service, C, forwards letters addressed to God to mail recovery offices or local churches. This compassionate approach ensures that these heartfelt messages find a place where they can be acknowledged and possibly answered. I love the letter approach, but whatever happened to screaming at the sky and waiting for lightning to strike? Ah, this is sweet and all, but Morgan Freeman must have an address for fan mail, right? Doesn't have to go to a church. Anyways, moving on to question number five. Lake Superior State University offers questing licenses for what mythical animal? A, dragon, I'm so excited. B, griffin. C, unicorn. Or D, phoenix. Lake Superior State University offers questing licenses for the mythical creature C, 
unicorn. While purely symbolic, these licenses add a touch of whimsy to the university's culture, embracing the mythical in the realm of academia. Ah, yes, unicorns. Even harder to spot than an end to your student loan payments. <laughs> And that's a wrap. Thank you all so much for tuning in and a huge shout out to our sponsors of the week, Star Wolves. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Make sure you're fully signed up for a Freckle TV account to be eligible for the goodie room. That's what I call the prize market. I'll be back next Wednesday, but tomorrow it's Juliano Hodges for a round of love trivia. This dates me, doesn't it? Hello, 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 Freckle family. I'm your trivia host, Juliano Hodges. Welcome to Thursday's love session. I'll be your love doctor, serving up a dose of romantic reminders that will make your heart skip a beat. <laughs> and for all those lovely new players out there, welcome. Our daily trivia is the only game where you can answer five questions every weekday to win dope prizes from Funkos to collectibles to NFTs and gaming computers. All you have to do is play every day, answer five questions, earn raffle tickets, and then you head on over to the prize marketplace and don't fumble. <laughs> All right, huge shout out to our sponsors at Star Wolves. You guys are amazing. You guys help keep the ball rolling. Let's start with question number one. In which Shakespearean play does the phrase, the course of true love never did run smooth appear? Is that A, Macbeth, B, Hamlet, C, A Midsummer Night's Dream, or D, Romeo and Juliet? In the timeless piece of Shakespeare's works, the phrase, the course of true love never did run smooth, unfolds in act one, scene one of the play, A Midsummer Night's Dream, spoken by Lysander and his poignant ob observation. It encapsulates the intricate complexities of love as, they as the characters navigate enhanced forests and magical realms. See A Midsummer Night's Dream becomes a kaleidoscope of emotions, portraying the universal challenges inherent in matters of a heart. The heart, a heart, your heart, my heart. Let's move on to question number two. What is the traditional gift for the 25th wedding anniversary? Is that A, silver, B, gold, C, ruby, or D, diamond? <laughs> you know the answer. A quarter century of marital bliss is commemorated with the traditional gift of A, silver, for a 25th wedding anniversary. This precious metal symbolizes the purity and strength and the enduring nature of the union that has withstood the test of time as couples reflect on the two and half decades of shared joys and challenges. The silver anniversary becomes a celebration of resilience and commitment. Very nice. Can't wait to get a taste of that. You know what I'm saying? My shorty gonna be like, just so loved. And um, I'm gonna say it. Question number three is our sponsored question of the day. Shout out to our amazing sponsors. Thank you for our sponsors. to our sponsors. <laughs> All right, let's move on to question number three. Which famous couple is known for their love story in the film The Titanic? Is that A, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, B, Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, C, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, or D, Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams? The cinematic landscape is eternally marked by the undeniable love story of B, Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. In the film The Titanic, the set against the backdrop of the ill-fated voyage, Jack and Rose's epic romance transcends into social divides, capturing the hearts of audiences worldwide. James Cameron's magnum opus, released in 1997, immerses viewers in the narrative that goes beyond tragedy, exploring the transformative power of love in the face of adversity. Very wordy, y'all. Y'all know I don't know how to read, so kind of a hard... No, I'm doing great. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. So if you want to make fun of me, hit me on the Discord. I'll give you smoke. All right, question number four. In Greek mythology, who is the god of love? Is that A, Zeus, B, 
Apollo, C. Hades, or D. Eros. Mm. In the Pathonian of Greek mythology, the god of love manifests as D. Eros, a symbol of desire and passion. Eros off and portrayed as a mischievous winged deity, weaves the threads of connection between gods and mortals, and his influence extends beyond the realms of divine romance, permeating the mythological tapestry with tales of enchantment and longing. Nice. Let's move on to question number five. What is the Italian word for love? Is that A, amor, B, bella, C, dolce, or D, grazie? Mmm, cheese. All right. The Italian language, renowned for its lyrical beauty, designates the word for love as A, amor, or is it amore? Who knows, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. This evocative term transcends linguistic boundaries, encapsulating the profound depth and passion of romantic affection rooted in Italy's rich cultural heritage. Amore, or amor, resonates as the universal expression of love weaving art, music, and literature as the resonant echoes across centuries embodying the essence of romance that defines Italy as the basin of love. Bash your whatever. And that concludes today's round of love trivia. Thank you guys so much for playing today's game and a huge shout out to our sponsors at Star Wolves. But make sure you sign up for Freckle TV account and create your user profile to be eligible for raffles and prizes. Stay tuned, the man himself, Lord Trivia, will return for Freckle Fridays. Yes, the game of love. Uh, <laughs> What's up, Freckle family? We are back. TGIFF, thank God, it's Freckle Fridays, and I'm your Friday trivia host, Ian Finer, AKA Lord Trivia himself. We're keeping the foodie quizzes going, but yes, this time I didn't write it. Our talented script writers in the writer's room took the lead in crafting these questions. I've been busy working on some mind-blowing features that at this point, I think we've released a lot of them. Most of you know how this works already, but just a reminder that Freckle TV's Daily Trivia is the only game where you tune in every Monday through Friday, answer five questions every day, and earn tickets that you can spend in the prize marketplace. Shout out to the Lil Hotties and Mr. and Mrs. J Vegas for sponsoring this week of trivia. And now let's get the day started with question number one. What condiment is made from fermented soybeans? Is that A, soy sauce? B, ketchup, C, mustard, or D, mayonnaise. The condiment crafted from fermenting served soybeans is none other than A, soy sauce. Originating from East Asia, soy sauce is a staple in various cuisines, renowned for its savory and umami-rich flavor. The fermentation process contributes to its depth of flavor and complexity, making it an essential ingredient in countless dishes worldwide. Moving on to question number two. What grain is used to make couscous? Ooh, good question. Is that A, quinoa, B, bulgur, C, millet, or D, semolina? Ah yes, couscous, the food so nice they named it twice. The grain traditionally used to make couscous is D, semolina. Despite its tiny size, couscous plays a significant role in North African and Middle Eastern cuisines. Made from coarsely ground durum wheat, couscous is a versatile and quick cooking staple served as a delightful base for various flavorful dishes. And fun fact, semolina flour is also the base for many pastas and um, pizzas. Now let's head to question number three, our sponsored question of the day. Shout out to our awesome sponsors, thank you so much. We gotta head to question number three and get this day rolling. Which country is the largest producer of mangoes? Is it A, India, B, Mexico, C, Thailand, or D, 
Brazil. Well, I actually would have gotten this question wrong, it appears. The country that is the largest producer of mangoes is not Thailand like I thought, but it's A, India. Mangoes are a significant part of Indian agriculture, and the country is known for its diverse varieties and production of this tropical fruit. Now let's head to question number four. What spice is made from the ground seeds of a tropical berry? Hmm. Is it A, cumin, B, cloves, C, allspice, or D, cardamom? The spice is derived from the ground seeds of a tropical berry, and that spice is sea allspice. Indigenous to the Caribbean, allspice got its name for the combination of flavors, resembling a bit of cinnamon, a bit of cloves, and some nutmeg all thrown in. Its warm and aromatic profile make it versatile spice used in both sweet and savory dishes across various culinary traditions. From the Caribbean all the way to China, you'll find allspice. Moving on to the final question of the day. What ingredient makes hummus creamy and smooth? Is it A, olive oil, B, tahini, C, Greek yogurt, or D, avocado? The ingredient responsible for the creamy and smooth texture of everyone's favorite hummus is B, tahini. This paste made from the ground sesame seeds adds richness and distinctive nutty flavor to the chickpea-based spread. A key component in traditional hummus recipes, tahini elevates the overall taste and consistency, creating a satisfying and delectable dip enjoyed worldwide. And that concludes this week of Daily Trivia. Thank you so much for playing and make sure you sign up for a Freckle TV account and make your profile if you haven't already to start earning tickets after the game. Shout out to our sponsors this week, Lil Hotties, Mr. and Mrs. J Vegas, y'all rock. John Bailey is coming back after the weekend. He just walked in the studio. It's time for Movie Mondays. LT signing off for the week and have a great weekend.